Well, this is week number 11 of Refuel Live. The second week of March, the coronavirus pandemic hit and we went totally digital. And as we finish Refuel Live, this is gonna be our last Refuel Live tonight. I wanna thank you so much for sticking with us these past 11 weeks. Now, we're not stopping our digital ministry. We're still gonna be doing things online on Wednesday night, but we're gonna be changing the format. But before I talk about changing the format later tonight, I wanna to thank you so much because this is new to me and I know it's been new to you. Having a youth group online, nobody had ever done it before, before the pandemic hit. So we, we've been reeling to figure out how to do YouTube and how to, how to have groups on Zoom and make it meaningful. And I hope that God has been working in your life during this time. Time. Now, I'm kind of excited about what you and I, through the power of God, have been able to do. I did some numbers and I found out that we have done 77 daily devos since this has all started. We've uploaded 96 videos to youth group. We've been having meetings every week on Zoom and been able to see each other's faces. Um, some of your youth leaders, we've been able to visit you at your homes or we've been able to send you things in the mail to let you know that we care about you and that we miss you. We had a Bible study lab for three weeks on Zoom. We've done a lot together online. Now, at the end of tonight, we're going to talk about some of the next steps that we're taking to go into phase one of our regathering plan. But I want to thank you so much. Now, we're going to try to make this live stream the best yet. We've put so much work and so much effort into this because we want to thank you so much for sticking with us. I hope you enjoy it. There we go. One take. Ooh. Eduardo. on Wednesday nights. So exactly. Don't but tune us out. With that, it's kind of sad news. It's a little bittersweet, but yet it's also exciting because that means we'll be meeting again. Yes, but Refuel will not be meeting, but we'll be live at, mm -hmm. well, not live, but we'll be on at nine. Mm -hmm. So that way you can get your summer plans in. It'll be a late night with Refuel. So I think, I think that'll be a nice little spin. Something yes. new for us for summertime. Just nine so you guys can have some more time, the daylight, you know, with the summer hours, and then you can join us at nine o'clock. For sure. On Wednesday nights for refuel late night. But we do have one birthday this week. <gasps> one birthday. I'm super excited about this one yes. too because I feel like he's really become this like integral part of our youth group. And he, he definitely keeps makes us our laughing, youth group. And he's like one of our favorites on our um, like little sessions that we have with high school. Yes. He's kind of like an entertainer. So we just want to wish a happy birthday to Carson Rhodes. Happy birthday, so buddy. happy birthday, pal. Yes, my favorite memory is of you up here dancing in your little blue suit. Of, yeah. <gasps> oh, my gosh, for Halloween. Yes. And, then it, and then it burst, didn't it? <laughs> I don't remember, but it was, it he, was great. He missed his uh, gift card because he went back and returned it to get a new one. Yes, I can. Uh, yes. But that's okay, though. That's an awesome memory, though, Carson. It is. Like I said, you keep us very entertaining on our toes, pal. And then we have some game winners. If you all played Ooh. the game today, um, the first one up here is. Apparently you guys have What to is guess. Matt McClay's yes. middle name? Middle name. And it is Ryan. And Matthew Evelina Ryan. guessed that one correctly. Way to go, Evelina. Okay, what is it's Austin, Austin Ray's middle name? I had no idea. No, but I heard it was, was it Edward? It was no, it's Tyler. Tyler. And Wait, George. Someone else has Edward. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That was my fault. And George guessed that. Okay, we're moving right along. Ooh, George, Abigail. congratulations. What Abby is Abby? I know this one. Me too. So I couldn't play. But Savannah Phillips. Abigail congratulations. Goes. I think she also has that as well. Well, hang on. I lied. What? I'm sorry. It's okay. They're not in the same order. Hang on. I lied. Who won the Abigail? Abby Ray? was Josh Barnett. Josh Barnett. Sorry. Congratulations, pal. I need to stick with what is on my thing. Okay. Now, hang on. Who's Wyatt? Wyatt McCabe's. Wyatt was Savannah Phillips. And his is Lee, Lee. correct? Okay. Yes. Wyatt Lee. What is the name of Mark? Is he here, Mark? He's, He's Edward. Yes. I knew there was someone with a little twist. And thing. Brooke Vaughn. Whoop, whoop, Brooke. Oh, well, we're oh. moving very long. Sorry. John and, <laughs> John oh, and Laura Armstrong. Armstrong's together. As yes. a collective unit, I'm liking this. 
And there's more. Blair, Blair and, Elizabeth. and Elizabeth. Now hers is an Elizabeth with a Z. Because yes. that's going to come into play. Wait, hang on, slow down. Oh, we're being rushed. I guess because it's our last time. You're to Cassidy, way to win for John and Laura. I'm sorry, go, I'm being Cass. rushed. We're okay. so proud of you, pal. What are the Brian, Brian and, Jennifer. and Jennifer Balls middle names? Now, this one I didn't know. Sorry, Brian. <gasps> Craig and Susan? I feel like that's like a sitcom, like, you know what I mean? Like something off of Seinfeld yeah. or Friends or something like Brian that. Brian definitely doesn't look like a Craig, though. No, Brian Craig. Mm. Um, Sydney Smith won this way one. Way to go, Sydney. Okay, who's next? Oh, oh, that's me. I know this one. That's me. Mine was number four. I spelled mine with an S. Elizabeth with an Hang S. on, I have to figure out. Mm -hmm. Oh, Abby Randon. Way to go, Abby. Yay. Okay, and then what is Matt? Single T's. Single T's middle name. I do not know. Robert, Robert and Matthew. Gavin Feigl. Way to Way go, to go Gavin. Gavin. We're glad that you are interacting with us online. Yes. Oh, Missy that's, Pal. <laughs> let's sit on that one. Okay, and well. That goes on to our next announcement, which is senior drop-in, because we love our seniors. We're going to be honoring you tonight. So we are going to be um, announcing a later date and time for you to come and design your blocks and sign your blocks on our senior wall. So just know that you will have the opportunity. You will not be stripped of that. No. Nope. Because our seniors for 2020 matter, and we love you, and we will be announcing that sooner okay yes. it was so much fun on saturday driving around exactly. to see the seniors and to congratulate them i think almost we should do that every year now I know, that was kind of gotten fun. into it you know? i enjoyed it might have to become a tradition because yes. it was fun even got to see it. evan black i was really <gasps> excited was so fun. but that yes so fun. with my little little horn mm -hmm. yes it was really <laughs> obnoxious like, it was dying at the time all, all right. right next and final Ooh, announcement super exciting is bible studies yes on monday and tuesday mm -hmm. High school, here is it is on Mondays, Mondays at 1. 1 o'clock p.m. And middle school, yours is Tuesday at, at 1. 1 o'clock as well. And we'll be under, like, on the lower parking lot, down underneath, like, the, is it the portico? Part, okay, like, cool. We'll be down there so you can have some shade. Still this is in the keep afternoon. our social distance, but, yet yeah, study God's yes. Word together. That's awesome. And that so, was one of my yes. favorite things last summer was studying um, the Word of God with our high schoolers. So I just look forward to that yes. opportunity again. So, so make sure you bring a chair. You bring your Bible, you bring a pencil or a pen. Or highlighters, or, if you Like want. me and my 20 little pens. Mm -hmm. And a bottle of water, because we will not have water yet. Okay. I mean, we'll be water on here, but, you know, we're not passing That's water out. That's a good out. tip, though, friend. Yes. So make sure to bring your own drink, your own chair, Bible, notebook, pen, whatever you need. Bring it with you, and we'll and meet. We'll study. Yes, if That's you have any questions, together. text us. We'll mm -hmm. let you know. I'm super excited yes. about that. Monday's our kickoff, so don't, be, you know, don't forget about yes. high schoolers. But, oh, and you have to register online. So okay. go to our Instagram, and um, there's Under a link. The bio? Yes, there's okay. a link, and you can click on it, and you can register. You have to register in order to show up, okay? okay. It's kind of one of the new yeah. rules. But um, we're going to leave you with a little Corona University video. Bumper video. Yes. It's our final send-off, so we just know that we love you. We have enjoyed our time with you, and can't wait to see you guys this summer. Yep. So bye! <laughs>
Well, I want to welcome you to the first ever and hopefully last ever uh, commencement exercise for the Corona University class of 2020. Uh, as we talked about already, this is our last Refuel Live that we do at 7 p.m. We're going to be changing formats. You'll hear more about that later. But over the past couple weeks, we've been talking about what it means to have been in, we call it Corona University. Being quarantined, not being able to go and do the things you want to do outside has taught us some things. And I think everybody has learned something different. So what we're going to do tonight is have kind of a a graduation ceremony from Corona University. Now I realize we have not beat this virus yet. There's still, we still have a ways to go. Um, but the stay-at-home order has been lifted. Um, I've seen some of you starting to go places. So you're starting to slowly kind of like emerge from your cocoon. We don't want to emerge from this coronavirus unchanged. I believe God has taught us some things. So I've got, I've assembled not just a graduation speaker, but I've assembled five graduation speakers tonight who are going to each share with you one thing that God taught them through the coronavirus, and it's all going to be out of God's Word. Uh, so what, one thing you'll need to know is each speaker gets five minutes, and it's called a cowbell service, meaning as soon as that five minutes is up, you'll see the five minutes down at the bottom of your screen. As soon as that five minutes is up, I'm going to ring this obnoxiously loud cowbell and cut them off so the next speaker can come on. So without further ado, because we don't have much time, I'm going to introduce our first commencement speaker, Mr. Jordan Musgrave. Well, hello, everybody. I only have five minutes to give a commencement speech, so let's get right to it. Grab your Bibles or grab your phones. Go to Psalm uh, chapter 46, and we're going to be looking at verse 10. We're going to be talking about be still. So during this uh, quarantine, during this coronavirus quarantine, uh, we're going to be talking about some stuff that a few of uh, the youth leaders have learned during quarantine. And one thing that I've learned is learned how to be still. Now, throughout the quarantine, uh, it's kind of just hit me and a lot of other people that I know, it's kind of just kind of hit me like a wall, just uh, having to be just completely stopped uh, in life, in the race of life. Uh, so that's, we stopped going to the gym, we have stopped going out to eat, we have stopped seeing our friends, we stopped hanging out with our families uh, that are outside of our homes, like uh, our older uh, grandparents, because they're more... Uh, likely to contract the virus, so we were advised to stay away from them. We can't see um, other other uh, people that we may know, and just do the activities that we that we are so used to doing. Um, so that's one thing that I've learned is just to be still. So let's go ahead and read uh, Psalm forty six ten. It says, "He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth." Now I want to focus on be still and know that I am God. So that is just a great, just that's just a great command to us. This is a command. Uh, be still and know that I'm God. Uh, further uh, back in this chapter, uh, as we can see, there's a lot of things that are just, there's just a lot of chaos in this chapter. There's uh, Mountains falling into the heart of the sea in verse 2. Uh, waters roaring and foaming in verse 3. The mountains quaking in verse 3 also. Um, there are nations in an uproar, verse 6. Kingdoms falling. Uh, God lifts his voice and the earth melts in verse 6. So there is just a lot of just commotion going on in this chapter. And as soon as we get to verse 10, God says, Out of nowhere, be still and know that I am God. Like, what in the world? Where does this come from? Be still and know that I am God. So this is something that just really catches my attention, especially during this time in quarantine, the coronavirus, uh, being still and knowing that God is in control, that God is there. Um, and it's just a big slap in the face because now that we can't do anything, maybe our anxiety is just amped up. We are just dying to get out. We are just dying to go see people that we know and do things that we are so used to being able to do. And we can't. And the only thing that we can do is sit and be still. We're kind of being forced to be still. So what, what do we do when we're, when we're forced to be still? Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we can do is 
we can sit and we can meditate on God and God's word, um, just like just like this verse in verse ten says, "Be still and know that I'm God." So that's one thing that we can do um, during this time, and it's just it's just really hard to do that sometimes because we're so used to doing things that are always occupying our attention instead of God. What 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 occupies our attention the most? Social media has occupied our attention. Maybe it still occupies our attention even more during quarantine because there's nothing else to do besides look at social media. And we're just so distracted by all these things. And the best thing that we can do is be still and listen to God's voice during this time. So maybe think of some distractions that may have distracted you before. So uh, things that distracted you before, before quarantine uh, that you were able to do and maybe take that time and apply it to a certain section of your day to be able to get in the Bible and get in God's word and sit and be still for a few minutes and a few moments to know that God is there and God is in control. Because God uh, uses this coronavirus. God uses, uh, unfortunately, the effects of sin, the effects of evil for his good. He can work through uh, evil things. He can work through uh, things that may seem a little, a little iffy to us and a little shaky. And uh, God can, can definitely use these things that really drive us, our anxiety through the roof and our, maybe our depression from being stuck inside. And it's just really important just to be still and meditate on God's word during this time of coronavirus. So I just want to encourage you guys today to maybe take a piece of your time out of, the, out of your day and be still and just sit and know that God is I do. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jordan Musgrave, uh, for sharing that, that we should be still. That, that was his takeaway from the coronavirus, had a great uh, verse to go with it, and we appreciate him uh, sharing with us. Now, our next commencement speaker um, is someone who really no, needs no introduction. Um, he's developed, go ahead on stage there, he's developed a bit of a cult following among some of our teenagers, um, kind of got his own fan club, and I am always so excited to hear what he has to say because he is someone who has deep thoughts and studies God's Word. So please, in a digital way, give it up for our very own Marky Mark Adkins. Hello? Is it working now? All right, you guys missed a couple jokes, but don't worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys just want to go ahead and turn to uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, that single verse pretty much sums up the whole lesson I've learned. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever more. I got to say, when, when this pandemic first hit, you know, it just felt like left and right, things closed, uh, things that you were used to every day just halted with, with no warning at all. I had to work from home. I couldn't go to the office. I couldn't go outside. The only thing, place I could go is the grocery store, and that was kind of the nightmare. Uh, <laughs> just the way that life changed suddenly and just out of nowhere uh, sometimes I think that there are certain lessons that can't be taught with words alone, and I, I think that this verse is one of those. Because when you read the words, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever more, if you just read that on its own, it sounds nice, but what does that really mean? What does that mean in a world where everything changes, everything has a beginning and an end? What does it mean for this this man, the son of God to exist, who has no beginning and no end. He is the beginning and the end. What does that really mean 
And to me, during this pandemic, what it's taught me is that in a life full of just nonstop inconsistencies, Jesus Christ is the one consistency you can always rely on. He is our anchor, our hope, our strong tower, everything that the book of Psalms says that the Lord is. There's really just, there's really nothing that he just won't do through you guys. He will provide everything. And I could, I could go on and on for hours about how great Jesus is if they let me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's, that's really about all I've got, honestly. I know Matt really wants to ring that cowbell, though, so I'll let him if he really wants to. I forgot to turn my mic on, so you didn't get to hear me ring the cowbell, so let's try that again. Um, Give it up for Mark um, in your own digital online uh, way in the comment section. Uh, make sure to know you appreciate him and love him. Uh, we love Mark. Uh, Mark, you were absolutely right. Uh, God does not change. Uh, next guy is no stranger to refuel. He was our uh, youth ministry intern for like two or three years. Um, and uh, Wyatt McCabe is going to be sharing with you about how when times get rough, we need to abide in God. So give a big digital non-COVID hug to Wyatt, and we're going to turn it over to him. Welcome. I hope you're ready for this uh, five-minute speech. It will probably be the worst speech you've ever heard, but we're going to go for it, okay? Um, quickly turn, John chapter 15. Um, I know I have on the screen here verses 1 through 11, but we're just going to look at 4 through 11 to speed things up for us. Uh, the principle here is abiding in God. I'm going to read the verses, and then we're going to talk about it again. I can be long-winded, so this is hard for me, so we're just going to, we're just going to go. Verse 4 of John 15 says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Okay, so after reading that, I hope you know who we're supposed to abide in. We're supposed to abide in Jesus. He says that many, many times, abide in me, abide in me, abide in me. So if you don't get that, we got to abide in Jesus. But the question that many of you might ask is, what does that mean? And that's leading me into what the coronavirus and the stay-at-home order has taught me, is that whenever we are supposed to abide in Christ, that means in Christ. That does not mean that we're supposed to abide in other things. The question is, where's your root? Is your root in the church? Is your root in, in your friends and your brothers and sisters in Christ? Where's your root? Your root is supposed to be in Christ and Christ alone. And I'm just going to be transparent and honest here that for me, since church has been closed and we've been home, I've felt a little bit further away from God. Why is that? Because if my root were fully in Christ and nothing else, Whenever circumstances change, my relationship with Christ should not change, which shows that my roots were not fully in Christ and I was not fully abiding in him. And I know that I'm probably not the only one that feels this way. Uh, church is a great thing and we need our churches and it shows that desperately. But at the end of the day, when, when churches are pulled away, when we're pulled away from our friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, all that we have and all that will ever remain is Christ and Christ alone. Make sure that your roots are in him. And again, like I said, I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels this way. The time of coronavirus and you spending a lot of time at home may have introduced some past sins that have snuck back up on you. Has it been a pornography addiction or has it been just more simple things like arguing with your family and you harboring bitterness and hate and anger inside of you and these sins start to creep back up on you. So these things come to light and what what Satan wants us to do with that is Satan wants it 
wants us to feel guilt and to hide and to run. And then when the church doors open back up, he wants us to feel ashamed to go back in. But what God wants us to do is just abide in him. And when these church doors open back up, he wants it to be the place that we feel the most welcome out of anywhere in the world because we are running to him because we abide in him. And when we abide in him, we want to abide with, not in, with his people and with his church. So I challenge you to look again at this verse and read verse 9. It says, this is Jesus talking. He says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. That's a big verse. As God the Father has loved Jesus Christ, the co-eternal one with God. That's a lot of love. He loves us that same way. And if we really think about it, the question is, do we believe that? I don't think we do. Because when we do sin and we fall short, and like I said, we're home and we're able to harbor in these old past sins that come and creep up on us. We don't feel like we're good enough for God and we don't feel like God loves us. But Jesus still says, you abide in me. And if you're one that abides in me, the same love that God has for me, I have for you. That's a lot of love. And that's something that we need to be encouraged by. So as I've said, abide in God when things get rough. Everything around us can be crumbling away. Like I said, the church can be going away, but God will never go away. We must abide in him forevermore. So just take that. I challenge you to be encouraged by it. Um, I think my speech time is running up. I'm just waiting on that cowbell to come now. I didn't want to go too long, so it's going to be a little bit short. So when's that cowbell coming? Got about 20 seconds. About 20 seconds. Um, So we can talk for 20 more seconds if you want. I mean, I don't really know what I'm going to say for 20 seconds, but I can make 20 seconds out of nothing. Everyone knows I can do that. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Cowbell. Thank you, Wyatt McCabe, looking good in that camo shirt, form-fitting. Got some muscles going on. His gym hasn't closed. Um, Our our next uh, commencement speaker tonight uh, is Laura Armstrong. Now, uh, Laura has great perspective on things. And if if you know, if you know Laura, uh, you know that she is is a communicator. Uh, So what I think might be the most difficult for her is condensing what she wants to say um, into five minutes. Um, So everybody give it up for Laura. Cheer her on as she takes the next five minutes to share what she learned in the coronavirus, how God gives us rest. What's up, Corona University? So never have I ever talked for less than five minutes. So let's see how this goes. I'm a little bit indignant that I didn't get to give the high school graduation speech for my class, so I'm super excited to give it for yours. Um, So if you've got your Bible, we are looking at Matthew 11, 28 through 30, that says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am lowly and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So my takeaway from this Corona University has been that God will give you rest whether you want it or not. So just accept it. God's going to give you rest. Um, I love to go full speed ahead, love to be involved in as many clubs as humanly possible, Uh, love to be the star of the show, love to be on stage any chance I get, um, talking to you guys, talking to whoever, honestly, that will listen to me. Um, And that can weigh on you after a time. So God says, pause. Kind of like Musgrave said, be still, rest. God will give you rest. Um, And that was one thing I was not really prepared for when all of this started, was the amount of rest that we were going to get as a family and as a community. We've all just kind of taken things at a slower pace, and it's nice. Um, So I think it was about three weeks into this, I realized, huh, God's probably teaching me something. Um, And he is the one who gives us the ultimate rest. Um, In Isaiah, the prophet says that even youths grow tired and weary. Um, So it's okay. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to be exhausted and worn out. God gives you rest, but you have to go to him. You have to take him, uh, take, take, let him, there we go, take on your burdens. Um, Yokes are something that weigh you down and um, cattle, like, carry the yoke. That's how they 
do the the carrying of the things. Um, obviously, I learned so much at Corona University. So, uh, but that heavy thing that goes around your neck, God is going to take that off and he's going to carry it. So you don't have anything choking you and weighing you down um, and being a burden. He's willing to take all of your burdens and his uh, yoke is easy. His burden is light. Uh, so what he's calling you to do may not be easy uh, by any means. That's, you know, not what's going on here. But he's saying that whenever you cast those cares and those burdens and those struggles on him, that he will give you rest. Um, and I think that that's something I kind of fought at first. I didn't want to slow down. I didn't want to rest. I didn't want to take it easy. I like going full speed ahead. Let's see how many rooms we can clean. Let's see how many people we can visit and socially distance ourselves from. Um, but God said, hold up, take it slow, rest in me, take more time to study your Bible, to spend time with your family, to learn about them, to learn about me and really just focus on who God is. And whenever you take the time to rest in him, you learn so much more about him and so much more about yourself, um, who you are in Christ, because he really has given you a new identity. And I know that I have to be close to my, my time limit here. So I'm not. Yes. So um, this is annoying. I should give it to Jesus. Take off my yoke. There we go. Um, so God also, Jesus, who is God also says in here, um, because I am lowly and humble in heart. I usually choose to ignore that part because humility is not something I'm good at, but God is, um, Jesus here is saying, you know, you have to humble yourself and admit that you can't do everything and that you need some help. Um, and that's especially difficult for us type A personalities who like to go, go, go and don't admit we need rest. Um, and so that's part of this. In order to give up your, your yoke and your heavy burdens, you have to admit that you need help and that you can't do it all on your own, which is a real, real tough pill to swallow. But it's in here. It's, it's in the Bible. So therefore, it is true. And God is calling on us to do that. So take off your, your yoke and your burden, cast it on Jesus, let him give you rest because God gives us rest. And when you learn about him in his word, you learn about yourself and you have to admit that you're humble and you need Jesus and it's, it's difficult. Well, that's uh, time for Laura. Thank you, Laura, for sharing. Um, and, and that is something I think God has taught a lot of us, the importance of rest. Um, so make sure on, on the comments, I'll, I, can, I can see your comments. Uh, make sure on the comments um, to give Laura a digital hand, a digital hug or whatever. Um, you can't spread COVID through the chat. So, uh, so, so make sure to give Laura some love. Um, our, our next and final speaker, commencement speaker tonight. Um, this guy has kind of been um, Mr. Mr. Go-To during this virus because anytime we ask leaders to submit a video, he's like the first one to send it in. It's kind of like, who, who will do anything? He drank an egg last night on Zoom. Um, so we're going to give it up for single T, Matt Johnson. Let's hear what you have to say um, about how God shakes things up in our lives during this time. Thank you very much, Matt uh, McClay. Um, we're just going to get right to it. I know you've been dying to hear this one. Obviously, we save the best for last. So we're just going to jump right into it. Um, and again, my takeaway is that we sometimes need God to shake things up in our lives. Now, I know that that may sound like a very unconventional takeaway from this coronavirus pandemic, because what I mean by that is I'm not specifically, didn't specifically ask for thousands of people to be killed for many people to lose their jobs, for schools to be closed, for us to not be able to see you guys, for you guys to not be able to see each other at school and on the weekends, for various functions such as church to be closed on Sundays, for refuel to be closed on Wednesdays, for your summer plans such as vacations to be altered or changed, and for various other church activities such as mission trip and vacation Bible school to be canceled. 
But what I am saying is that when things are shaken up in our lives, when things are disrupted, when things are altered, there can be positive things that can come out of that. Many of you guys have said, and I've also heard from some of our leaders when we've talked on our weekly Zoom meetings on Sundays, and what I've heard from some of my friends here and back home in Cincinnati is some of the positives that have come out of this have been things such as I've been able to grow closer to my family and connect with them more and spend time with them. I've been able to um, get in touch with and reestablish connections with long distance friends or friends maybe who live close by that I haven't talked to in a while. I've been able to help others in a great time of need, whether it's delivering them groceries or maybe helping support them financially if they're struggling, if they've lost a job. And then more importantly, speaking on a spiritual basis, some of us have been able to grow closer to God and spend more time in his word or been able to talk to God more through prayer. And speaking in regards to those things, when those positive spiritual things happen in our lives, when we experience that spiritual growth, there's something called revival that takes place in our lives. Listen here to what it says in Psalm chapter 119. Verse 25, it says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. Verse 37, it says, Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Verse 40, it says, Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. And there's five other times, so eight times total in this, in this book, um, in this chapter in Psalms, where the word revive is mentioned. Now, I'm using the New King James Version. So some other versions say things like preserve my life or give me life. But what all of those are saying in the same way, what this unknown author of this chapter of Psalm is stressing is that we need revival in our lives. And what I mean by revival is we need to have some type of growth occur in our lives. We need to grow. We need to spiritually grow. And that should always be our goal is to spiritually grow for our lives as often as possible to be on an upward trajectory and have less instances in our lives when spiritually speaking, our growth is going downwards or maybe where it's stagnant and we're in a rut when we feel like we're going in circles and not going anywhere where we're not getting any traction because we're stuck in the rut. That's the exact opposite of what we want to happen. We want our lives as often as possible, even though we're all sinners, we all fall short, we're never going to be able to achieve this 100% of the time, but we should always be looking for ways that we can obtain spiritual growth in our lives and become more Christ-like and draw closer to God. Now, that revival is going to take many different forms. Perhaps it could be God calling out and removing certain sinful aspects of your life. Perhaps it could be removing hobbies or activities that, although they may not be sinful, they don't give any spiritual benefit. And because of that, they're perhaps hindering your relationship with God. Maybe it could be removing friends or significant others from your lives or associating with them less because they're a negative, bring a negative influence on your life and they're hindering your relationship with God. Maybe it's God throwing some trial at your life or throwing some obstacle, something that's really going to challenge you, some trial that in the end when you come out of it is going to increase your faith and trust in God. My point being is that this revival, these revivals are going to take many different shapes and forms for each of us. And more often than not, they're not going to be pretty and we're not going to like it. But I think what we can all take away, or at least I hope that we can all take away at the end of that revival, when we experience that revival and go through it, is that we look back on it and say that it was worth it. That we came out better on the other end because we drew closer to God, which is much more important than anything else in this, um, in this world. And so... My take, my take away and what my hope for myself and for all of us and for you guys is that if we want to experience spiritual growth in our lives, then it's important that our prayer always ought to be for God to shake things up in our lives, for him to upset, to disrupt the status quo, upset the establishment, and for us to experience true spiritual growth. And so without further ado, Matt, let's do that cowbell. Thank you, Single T, and thank you to all the people uh, who are our commencement speakers. And before we move on to this next little section, I want to say thank you to you. Uh, I, I know that we're not through this thing entirely. I know there, there's more adjustments to make and, and, and things to come. But as we kind of conclude our Refuel Live and get ready to move into another season that you'll, you'll hear about soon, I just want you to say, or I just want you to know that I believe God has been working 
happening in my life and working in your life during this time. Now, what they usually have graduates do during a graduation ceremony, once the speakers have, yeah, ha- have, have spoken and, and the principal gets up and, and, and says that you may move your tassels from the right to the left. Now, I've got a tassel. I'm the only one in the room with a tassel. But um, you, I want you to, with me, move your digital tassel from the right to the left. You are graduates of Corona University. Take the things that God has taught you, put them into place in your life, and live them out. Now, here's what I want to ask you to do. Um, We're getting ready to uh, have a song. Now, I I selected this song because I thought this song was was a nice way to bookend the beginning and end of our Refuel Live. This song was recorded the second week of March. It was the last time teenagers were in this building. We already had to shut down youth group because of the, because of the coronavirus. Uh, we weren't going to be able to have a youth group that night, but a couple students came in just and stayed distant and just wanted and recorded one song to last us through these 11 weeks. And this was the song. It was Christ Be All Around Me. And here's what we can say now as graduates of Corona University, that every week we went through, every day we woke up to the same old, same old, that Christ was with us. So if you have a prayer request, if you need someone to pray for you tonight, the number is going to be on the screen where you can text me as you listen to this song. Worship with with our band. Thank God for always being with you during this time. And if you have a request, text me. After the song's over, I've got an important announcement about what's coming up for Refuel.
All right, so we're getting ready to start phase one of regathering as a youth group, and I want to let you know what that involves and how you can be involved. So we know that some of you are ready to come back. You're ready to gather here. Uh, you're ready to be in person with each other, and, and we're ready for you. We know that some of you, uh, you and your parents, you're not ready to start gathering back together, and that's okay. We want you to know that we're ready when you're ready. Now here's what we're going to be doing for the month of June for phase one. The first thing is we're going to have some opportunities for you to gather together in person as a youth group and as a church. This Sunday, May 31st, our church, Lewis Memorial, will be starting services back up. Now we have two services that you can attend, one's at 930 and one's at 11 o'clock. And that's going to be our schedule going forward for the next few weeks and next, next month or two. For teens, we're going to start having a Bible study every week. We're going to have one for high school and one for middle school. The high school Bible study is going to meet every Monday at 1 o'clock. The middle school Bible study is going to meet every Tuesday at 1 o'clock. We're going to be studying the book of Philippians, and here's what you'll need to know. We're going to be meeting outside. We're going to be meeting, be meeting under this portico here. We want you to bring your Bible, uh, maybe a pen or a notebook, and bring a lawn chair. And when you come, you're going to be able to, we'll be able to space out. We'll be able to study the Bible together. And it'll probably last about an hour for each of those Bible studies. So high school is on Monday at 1. Middle school is on Tuesday at 1. And to, in order to come, you need to register. You can go to our church website, lmbc.org, or you can follow the link in our bio on Instagram and select whether you're going to register for the high school Bible study or the middle school Bible study. They start next week, June 1st and 2nd. So that's what we're doing in person. We're still going to be doing digital things. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to continue our daily devos. Our daily devos, they're on on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on YouTube at 11.30 and on Instagram at 11.30. And you can watch those anytime, but that's when they premiere. We're going to keep doing that. We're going to keep having youth group online on Wednesdays, but we're moving it to a new format. It's going to be called Refuel Late Night. It's going to be on YouTube, and it's going to be at 9 o'clock on Wednesday night. So you'll have time to do all your outside things. Then when it gets dark, you can come in and join us together for youth group. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your understanding and your patience. We're ready to start phase one. I hope you can make it to the Bible studies th this week. But if not, just know we're ready when you are.